Some casual jackets have a two-piece sleeve that can be top-stitched or not. That means that there's an extra seam over there and one under here, an upper sleeve and under sleeve. Sometimes there's a little vent there with a cuff. You'll see this feature on a lot of patterns. So that's what we're going to construct today in detail. You can come back over here as a reference where you find yourself a sleeve like that next time you sew. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And I do pretty frequently make videos that are standalone technique videos that you can come back to as a reference when you find something like this in a pattern you're sewing. There there are so many techniques and features that are pretty much universal. They're not specifically tied to one pattern. If you see this feature on a big four pattern, if you see it on indie patterns or whatever, the technique is pretty much the same. And one of those is the type of sleeve you find on casual jackets like denim jackets, cargo jackets, where you have an upper sleeve, which is a large piece, an under sleeve, which is a small piece. You, you sew those together. And then on a lot of patterns, you'll find a little vent at the bottom with a cuff. To achieve a really neat look there, there's a few steps that we have to do inside. There's a little extra seam allowance that the designer has left in there for you to be able to do that. And I have sewn this many times. Let me show you examples of finished leaves that look like this and what we're going to achieve when we put it together now in detail. This is a denim jacket sleeve, the classic one. This one has a lot of top stitching because denim jackets do, you can see them there. And in this case I made sure that the top stitching looked continuous with the top stitching of the vents right here. And all I do is sew up to a point and I don't back tack and then I push threads to the back and knot them at the back so that it doesn't look like there's any reinforced areas right here. But obviously I had to top stitch these in separate stages. With this one I do have a back tack. I'm not much of a fan of back tacks but I think with denim it's okay. The cuffs have extra top stitching as well. That's just something aesthetic on denim that looks nice. And then on the inside, there's also a little raw area that I do by hand. But in essence, it's the same technique. It's just top stitched a little differently because it's denim right there. This is another jacket with the same type of two-piece sleeve, only with an extra detail. Here we can see the back seam, the one that has a vent. This one has two parallel rows of top stitching because that's nice to do in linen or denim. And then towards the bottom, we have the vent done in the exact same way, only that in this one, we have this detail of a few pleats. It doesn't change the technique. You just fold the pleats and then you sew in the cuff like normal. It's just that they're gonna be some pleats there. <laughs> Otherwise, it's exactly the same thing. In here, we have the folds, everything's edge stitched. We still get a raw type of situation here that I've done by hand. And in the end, it's the same thing, even though it's a different pattern. The technique will be pretty much the same in whatever sleeve you see that has this style. You saw that there was one there that had a few pleats there. That's something that you could find. Don't let that detail throw you off because the technique won't change. The seam there, the vent, it's all the same. There's just a little extra volume there for you to sew pleats. You put those pleats together and then your cuff will still fit at the bottom like usual. That's an extra detail that you could find or maybe not, it will just be normal. There are small variations you can find. The variation that will mostly affect you is the seam allowance. Sometimes it's 5 eighths, sometimes it's a half an inch, sometimes it's 3 eighths. Don't let that steer you off as well because the technique will be pretty much the same. I'm gonna show you these from start to finish on a pattern that you'll see next in the next video. We are using a half an inch seam allowance and we're going to get a beautiful result in the end. You'll see how easy it is to do the whole thing. We'll have a finished sleeve. So let's get into it. This is a two-piece sleeve. This is something that you see in a lot of patterns. This is not an uncommon feature to see. So basically you have an upper sleeve, which is always the larger and tallest piece over here. And then you have an under sleeve, which is always a shorter, narrower piece over there. The upper sleeve over here will have an excess of seam allowance right here where this vent is going to be. So for example, this sleeve is gonna use a half inch seam allowance to unite these. But once the vent starts, you have an extra half an inch coming out over here. On the under sleeve though, you have an extra inch, 
which is basically twice the seam allowance coming out extra over here. In the pattern you'll see a dot where you sew up to that will match up. It's easier at this point to serge these edges first, these ones over here, just get that out of the way and serge them and then we can carry on and sew this together, this seam including this vent area here that is easier to sew than what you think. After that seam is sewn, then we can put the whole sleeve together, press it, and then attach the cuffs. The cuffs here are rectangles. We have one layer that's interfaced. We have a layer that's not interfaced. Usually the interfaced layer will look smoother and will be the one you see on the outside. And the softer layer is gonna be the one inside touching your wrist, your skin. These outer edges here have been surged already. This is gonna be a seam we're gonna do after doing this seam over here. At this point here, my fabric is right sides up. We're going to take this under sleeve piece and put it on top here so that these are right sides together. Okay, here we're at the sewing table. Here is the upper sleeve at the bottom. The under sleeve is on the top. Remember, if you're sewing the other side, it's just mirrored to this. It'll be exactly the same thing. On the top, this has been squared, so that matches right there, and then you go down. And then when you get to this point, you're going to see a dot right there. I've got it marked with a friction pen. And then at the bottom, you also have a little mark. I have actually drawn a dashed line with my friction pen, so it's easy for me to follow. What we're going to do is sew from here down to the dot with a regular stitch length. We're going to reinforce, and then this bottom section is going to be a basting stitch. This particular pattern uses half an inch seam allowance, but you could find others that use 3 8 or 5 8 Just follow along with what you have, but the concept is the same. Here we're almost up to the dot that you can see right there. That's where I'm going to reinforce and then continue with the basting stitch. After sewing this, we're going to head to the iron because we're going to do some folds. First, let's just extend this over here and press the seam open. After pressing it open, that will just be to set the seam. Then we're going to press the seam allowance towards the upper sleeve or the larger part of the sleeve. That's open and now let's press both of these seam allowances together over towards the larger part of the sleeve, the upper sleeve. Here we can see that horizontal area that's excess of seam allowance and then from here on up we just have the regular seam allowance. I'm going to go and surge from here all the way up and leave all of this raw. It's easy to put this right under your serger and start surging right there. It's easier to do it like that rather than starting from the top and then trying to finish here before chopping this off with the blade. Here's a closer look at what I want to do. I want to put this under my serger. I want to start surging right there. So if I just lift this up, make sure the needles are up so I can see them, and then just slide this in, push that presser foot down and start surging right there, it'll be much easier to manage. You can see how I was able to start surging right there on the edge. So what I want to do is just take the actual threads out of the loops here and then I can just grab this and knot it. That'll be a clean finished on the surged area without this coming undone if I just left it like that. So that's done and now we're going to go back to the ironing board. Okay, here's a closer look. There is the surged edge right up to that point right here. Here we have excess seam allowance, smaller side of the sleeve, the under sleeve. From that seam that we can see there, up to here we have the half an inch and then from here onwards we have an excess of an inch. From that seam over here this is wider than what we have under there. So let me just show you this way you can see this side is smaller. Let's take this smaller seam allowance that we have under here and just fold it in. Meet that edge right there and we're going to fold it right up to that seam. We're basically folding it in by half an inch. Let's put this back like that. So when you look at it, we have the big area there, we have the smaller area folded in by half an inch like that. Now what we have to do with this larger area is fold it in twice by half an inch. So once, twice. And then we're gonna have all of these vent areas stacked on each other. It, this is so easy. So you can see now everything is smooth right here. There's no excess seam allowance anymore from that seam that we've just surged, it's all in the same level. I'll show it to you like that. So on this under sleeve side, we're gonna have the one that was folded in twice, as you can see there. One, two, it reaches the seam line. On this other side, we just have folded in once, up to there, and that's it. So just because that's all raw here, don't think that's how it's gonna be. It's not. <laughs> what we're gonna do now is take away that basting stitch that we have right there. 
might be hard for you to see but I can clearly see where I backstitched right there where I reinforced and where the long stitch length starts so I can see that and just remove it now the whole idea for basting this is that so it's easy to press so we can do all these folds nice and neatly okay we still have the same folds we've just done only that this is loose like that now the order which you do it doesn't really matter what the important thing is that we edge stitch both of these folds down so you can do that one and that one doesn't matter which one you do first I'm just gonna take all of this spoke and push it up to the top and I'm gonna pin it so it's out of the way right here and then I'm going to start right there and edge stitch down there. That's done. That's one side down and then we're going to top stitch the other side. There you can see it. This looks like that from that side. And now I'm just going to unpin this other side so I can have access. And I'm also going to edge stitch this. So maybe this time I'm going to push everything down like this and start from here and go up to there. Whichever way you feel you get better access is going to work. The important thing is to edge stitch them both down. That's how that looks. You can see one of the edge stitched areas is underneath. The other one's on the top. They're both very neat and fixed down in place on the edge. That's how it looks like on this side. And now we have a little bit of a situation here because however you do it, you're gonna end up with this area there being raw. Remember we searched from here on up and after the folds, we still had that excess seam allowance there that is raw. I've seen ready to wear denim things, they just leave it and then they just do a bar tack on top of that. I don't wanna do that. I think it looks really messy. I don't like bar tacks in general. So I'd rather just do a little horizontal seam later to hold this in place. And what I'm going to do first is some hand sewing. I just have a matching thread here and I'm going to put my needle here through the side to get that knot to come out underneath so it's not seen. And I'm basically going to do a blanket stitch about an eighth of an inch in. Just put my needle, find that loop, put the needle through again. And I'm just going to go over and over this area until it's fully covered with thread. Okay, there you can see up closer that I've covered all of the raw area with thread that are going to protect the area and I'm quite happy with that. Pin this in place so that it's all on top of each other. And from that stitch where I had reinforced before, I'm just going to do a horizontal seam there and then another one on the bottom and that's going to hold that in place. Otherwise, you can do a bar tack across there. That is up to you. You do need something though to hold that vent in place. Okay, that's one and I'm going to do one about a quarter of an inch below it. This is just personal preference. I want to have two here just to reinforce. Okay, that's how the vent looks. Two little seams holding that down. You can see it's all clean in there. And those little horizontal seams actually went on top of that area where I hand stitched. So it's very secure, it's very safe. You can throw this in the wash and it's not gonna come apart. You're not gonna get a hole. Now there's something optional you can do now if you want to, you can top stitch this long seam of the sleeve. Depends if it's denim or whatever you're doing, maybe you want it for aesthetic reasons. This is the time where you need to do that top stitching or edge stitching all the way from the top of the sleeve down to there. For this sleeve, just because it's a print and no one's ever gonna see that top stitching, I'm not gonna do it. But I have done it when I'm using solids or denim. I have done even sometimes a double row of top stitching whatever you want to do now that the vent is done we can take our sleeve we had already searched these edges and we're going to do this long seam of the sleeve and then we're going to have the sleeve completed and then what's pending is the cuff that goes underneath that will catch the vent okay here is the sleeve finalized the seam that we've just done has been pressed nice and neatly over towards the back is where you have this other seam with a vent Let's put it aside and quickly sew up the cuff. What I have here are the two pieces together, right sides together over here. The one underneath is not interfaced, the one on the top is interfaced. I'm going to be sewing this on the reverse, which means that the top stitching at the end is going to be done on the interface side, the visible side. So that's why I have the interfacing side folded up like this by half an inch. If you're using a different seam allowance in your pattern, it would be the exact same thing. Both were cut from the same pattern piece, so they are exactly the same size. We're going to sew the short ends, the long end, and the short ends. It's a rectangle, and we're going to keep that fold that we've just pressed right there where it is. I have it pinned. You'll see that when I get to corners, I don't pivot my needle and move the fabric. I finish the seam all the way to the edge and then start again because I get a really nice intersection of seams there. If you wanted to sew this in the traditional way, which you see in most instructions, the fold over here would be on the non-interface side and the 
and the extended edge would be the interface side. Uh, that's not my preferred way because when you top stitch at the end, you're not catching the seam at the back very well sometimes. There we have it. Now to flip it right sides out, I'm gonna fold the seam allowances onto themselves at these intersections. I'm gonna fold the seam allowance towards the non-interface side right here. So just like that and like that. Hold it nice and firmly, put your hand inside your fingers, hold the seam allowances and flip it and you always get a really nice point right there. Look at that nice point and you don't need to trim or use tools. I don't like trimming away the seam allowance because it weakens the area. There we have it. Now I'm gonna head over to the iron, press the seam open in here, kneading all of this up and then we'll be able to sew it onto the bottom of the sleeve. I'm gonna be sewing this to the wrong side of the garment. So here we have the bottom of the sleeve, we have our vent. The cuff is gonna involve both vent areas. We're gonna take our cuff, we have a fold in there that's going to align with the vent over here, flush against each other, put a pin to hold it in place, and then I'm just gonna bring this over and do the same thing on the other side of the vent. Now this is drafted to match one to one, Sometimes on some patterns you'll find extra details like a little pleat at the bottom of the sleeve. If that's the case, then do that first. In any case, once your pleat or detail is completed, the cuff should match the finished length at the bottom. And then we're gonna go ahead and sew this. It is straight, it's just a small circumference, so we have to deal with fabric and moving it out of the way. We wanna sew right against that fold that we have there. Move this out of the way as much as you can. This is the right side of the sleeve. This is the seam that we've just sewn and the loose end that we have there has already been pressed up. And this is what's gonna come over here on this edge, tuck that seam allowance in there. And this is gonna cover that seam that we've just done and finish off the cuff. So I'm gonna head over to the iron, press the seam allowance up into the sleeve. From the wrong side, it looks like that, super neat. And then we're just gonna sew this down. The cuff is usually sewn all the way around, the whole rectangle, not just the part where you're sewing the cuff down. So I'm gonna start on one of these long ends over here. Depends on the fabric, for some I would have hand basted this down, but this is so easy to work with, the pins are absolutely fine. So in this section here, I'm gonna be taking some pins out as I sew. There we have it, the cuff goes right up to that edge of the vent and then all the way around up to the other side of the vent. And then this overlaps like this. And on this side that overlaps is where you're gonna have your buttonhole and your button right there. And my goal was to show you how you assemble the sleeve with the vent and the cuff. I'm not gonna be filming setting in the sleeve because I already have content about that. I'll put a thumbnail here or a video that shows you how I like setting in my sleeves because there's nothing different in the way I'm gonna do it. This is another jacket, another sleeve. This is 100% linen, so it's easy to see. This is the front part of the sleeve. Here is the cuff. When you look at the back part of the sleeve, we have a seam going down this way. And then at the bottom of the seam, we have a vent and the cuff right there. Now with this project, I did extra things like buying the seams. I did these before sewing the other seam with a vent. And now the seam that has the vent is also bound, but I bound it with the same color as the fabric so it wouldn't be contrasting here around the vent area. The seam allowance is pressed towards the big part of the sleeve, the upper sleeve that doesn't change. But instead of serging, I bound. So you can see the edge of the binding. I did fold that up so I wouldn't have a raw edge of the binding. Folded that up and then I just bound it and it's the same thing. I still get a little bit of a raw area there from all these folds that I had to finish by hand. That doesn't change, but everything else is the same. These are extra things that you can do if you want to. You don't have to. I just did them with this one.
I did not include in this video how to set in sleeves because I already have a full video about that. This is how the thumbnail looks. If you want to see how I set in sleeves, go ahead and see in detail because I show you there how to do it many ways and I show you how I don't like to do it. So you can get a really good idea on how to good, get a good result here. This one was just about putting the sleeve together and getting that vent looking nice. You always have a little raw area in there no matter what pattern you use. It's just like that and I always like to finish that by hand. It'll be tucked away inside, you know, it'll be covered by either the bar tack or those little horizontal seams that I like to do. And no one's gonna see that little bit. What's important for me is that it's finished and it's not gonna fray. So if you have to do a little bit of hand sewing to achieve that, go ahead and do it. You know, it's not wrong. <laughs> Remember all these standalone technique videos, I put them in a playlist. I'll leave that link down below there so you can click there. You can see all the topics I've covered over the years. And if you're ever stuck on a technique and you don't know how to find my content, it's so easy. Just type on the search bar on YouTube, lifting pins and then whatever topic you need and you will find it because I probably have something about it because I've been here for a long time and I made content about everything basically. So I hope this was helpful and stay tuned for the next video on the channel where you will see the jacket that this particular sleeve was attached to. It's an amazing pattern you can't miss out. So I'll see you then. Bye and happy sewing.